We often have extraordinary guests for our weekly Touch Base in Seoul section, but this week we have someone who particularly makes me feel that I'm not doing enough with my life. First, he is a musician and frontman of a rock band called Yang Bandel, who released their new EP last month. He also owns a publishing company as well as a vegan restaurant, Sosik, whose head chef we featured previously on Touchbase. He's also involved in fighting for animal rights. And earlier this year, he acquired a historic bookstore called Pulmujil, saving it from bankruptcy. So I'm glad to say we've managed to pry him away from his busy schedule. Mr. Chum Bum Sun, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. So you are a man of many hats, as we've just uh, outlined in the introduction. How do you introduce yourself to other people? And what kind of introducing do you relate to the most? I primarily introduce myself as a writer. I write uh, prose, but also I write music. So in the English language, it also makes uh, more sense because a songwriter is also a writer. Mm. So I'm, I'm primarily a writer, but I also happen to be involved in uh, movements. For example, animal rights movement, which led to my uh, vegan restaurant and also other forms of social movement, uh, which would be relevant to my publishing company and my bookshop. So to summarize, I'm a writer <laughs> who's involved in many movements. Right, right. Yeah. So let's start. I want to start with uh, Pulmujil, the social science bookstore that you took over early this year. Right. I want to start there because it made quite a few headlines in Korea. Right. Can you first explain to our listeners about this bookstore, why it's so historic? So this particular bookshop is located right in front of Songkinggwan University, which is the oldest university in Korea. And this is arguably the oldest radical bookshop in this country. And th there used to be many of these kind of uh, humanities bookshops in mm -hmm. front of universities in the 80s and 90s, but they all died away. Right now, there's only two left, one in front of SNU, Seoul National, and one in front of Sung Gwan, and I acquired the latter. Uh, it was going out of business, and I thought it was worthy of saving because Korea needs more of these uh, humanities bookshops, especially if it has a history behind it. I think it's always better to continue that legacy rather than start from scratch. Right, so obviously you see this uh, bookstore going out of business. Right. But then what drives you to make that jump to say, right, why don't I try and take over this? Well, my mom used, used to run a bookshop herself. So I've always had this oh, okay. sort of uh, fantasy uh, about having my own bookshop. And, and so I, it was, a, was it a general bookshop that your mom used to run? Uh, a secondhand bookshop, mm, okay. actually. It was very mm. cozy and beautiful, mm. and I always missed it. And, uh, and, I, and I really loved going to bookshops when I was in the UK and the US, and uh, I wanted to create one for myself. And I already had a publishing, small publishing house. So it was quite rational for me to start one. And, but then I was, I was not thinking of acquiring an old one, until I read the news about mm. this particular bookshop called Pulmujil that mm. was uh, so historical and meaningful, mm. but was simply going out of business. Mm. And the owner, the previous owner, was looking for young people who was willing to carry on the, his, his torch, mm. basically. And I, when I was reading the news article, I, I almost, almost felt like he was speaking to me. He mm. was looking for someone like me. So I, was, I straight up went to his bookshop and decided to uh, take it over. Right, you and a couple of partners understand. Yes. And the thing is, he actually gave it to you for free, didn't he? I understand. He even took taking well, some debt with him. Right. Uh, a substantial portion of it, he, he took it with him. We we still have a sizable uh, <laughs> debt right. that's uh, under us. And uh, mm. uh, it's our job to really uh, pay it back and mm. really save the bookshop. That was in the beginning of the year that you decided to take it over, but right. uh, you've been running it since the summer, I believe. Since, how, yes. How has it been going since then? Uh, it's a lot more work than I thought. It's very, <laughs> it's very. Uh, there was a reason why it was going out of business, mm. and uh, but then I have my amazing partners, and uh, they're working really hard as we speak too. Mm. They're uh, working really hard to renovate the bookshop. Now it's very uh, chic and beautiful, and uh, uh, we have reading spaces. And uh, I've been curating the, 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 the bookshelves myself and uh, it's on the right path, mm. but we've got a long way to go and we need, we need your help, actually. We need everyone's <laughs> help. Right. Uh, yeah. have, have people been drawn to it, though, uh, since you've taken over? Yeah, we've been hosting many interesting uh, events, lectures and seminars. We recently had one about Extinction Rebellion, 
which is a sort of a climate action that originated from from Britain actually, and it was very much appreciated by the, the by our guests, by our、uh, customers, and we have、uh, weekly seminars and philosophers like Hannah Arendt and、mm. and etc. And I, I'm I'm loving it. It's exactly what I imagined when I was、uh, trying to open a bookshop myself. Right, you've always been surrounded by words. It seemed then your mother, I didn't know, had a book、uh, bookshop. Right,、uh, as you said, you're a writer, a、right. singer songwriter, and you also have a, a published company, a small publishing company. Right, right. Can you tell us a little bit about that. So、uh, our published company is called Turumi, and we're trying to basically、uh, discover old writings from radical Korean thinkers in the 20th century. For、uh, one reason or not, was、uh, hitherto sort of neglected. For example, we published our first book was a book by Ho Jung Suk, who was a socialist feminist writer from the 1920s, and her、wow. writings from the 20s are very eye-opening, extremely relevant to our times, because she writes she was the very first woman to have her hair cut、mm. short, which was like、oh, unimaginable.、No. Right back then. Back then, it, 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 she received so much backlash, and she wrote articles about that, and, and it was so fascinating to read just now. But it's a Uh, impossible to read and understand the original because it's mixed with Chinese words and old Korean, so we modernize it. And B, he,、uh, she, actually moved to North Korea and was in the cabinet, so her writings could not be published in South Korea until we did. So there are a lot of thinkers like like her, Ho Jung Suk, who are are worthy of being rediscovered and being widely、uh, popularized. And our house focuses on those、uh, radical ideas that are.、Uh, Uh, that needs more more focus. Hearing you speak about this kind of、uh, people that you want to champion, this bookstore and、uh, the, the 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 writers that you want to champion with your publishing company,、right. I'm I get curious about your background.、Right. I understand you went to a very,、uh, should we say, elite high school, and then you also went to an Ivy League.、Uh, I understand university. As well, yes, yes in the、uh, in the US, in the US, in there,、yes. in the US. Yes. and then you also did a masters at Oxford as well, right? And then so and, and so, can you tell us a little bit about that about your background? Well, I was originally trained to be a historian,、mm. and that's which is why I have a masters in history. And I realized after my masters, I I'm not a fit cut for a a doctor or a professor.、Mm. I just did not see myself doing that for the rest of my life. And I was, I realized, I'm more interested in in being active in the field,、uh, directly involved in the, the movement, and my writings had to be sort of、uh, aimed at the general public rather than a small group of academics.、Mm. So I. But so you were you were originally wanting to become a historian. A historian.、Okay. Yes, yes. Or、oh, before then, I was supposed to be a lawyer, as with all sort of Korean. <laughs> you know,、uh, either either lawyer or doctor is, right, is right. the parent's dream, right?、Mm, so, of course. But I was、uh, thinking of becoming a historian. I, I still consider myself a student of history.、Mm. I'm just not a professional academic.、Mm. I try to bring my understanding of history, my my views on history, into my、uh, businesses. For example, the bookshop and the publishing, as well as my temple food restaurant.、Mm. So all these are interconnected. I would say. And then during your time at university, I understand is or high school is when you started music as well and、yes. started a, a forming a rock band. Right. Or、oh, rock, but rock and roll has always been a big sort of part of my life. It's it was a sort of a hobby、mm. for for the longest time until in 2016, when my album called Revolution Songs was met with an actual revolution in、right. this country,、mm. the candlelight revolution that sort of overthrew the previous president. And it was、uh, very well received at the time,、uh, coincidentally because it was so fitting. And I, th- I had, I had a great pleasure in in performing at the rally and、uh, just having my music being interpreted in various different ways. Right. So you had a big performance, I understand, in front of the candlelight rally, in front of、yes. something like a million people. Right. It was、say. the very first time when a million people,、mm. well, according to the official tally. A million people showed up, and it was a life-changing experience to say the least. And that's when I really decided I, I wanted to be an artist, a musician, and be involved in this particular land and people, rather than be a historian or a lawyer abroad. And you know, what did those people around you?、Uh, how did they react when you decided to fully take on this path? Because obviously, you know,、mm. well, let's say your parents or your friends <laughs> around you. You know, right, right. when you you had gone. 
it's, it's seemingly, you know, to, to Oxford and uh, right, right. Columbia University. Right. Well, my parents were obviously sort of taken aback with my decision. and But my mom, as I said, well, she herself was a bookshop owner. And mm. when she was in, the, in her 20s, she also was a vocalist in a, in a rock band. And so it's, it's in my genes, I guess. So it's partly because of her that I'm... <laughs> that I'm doing all these. So she doesn't really have a, uh, uh, too much say on this. And other like friends and people around me have always known that I'm, I did not really belong in the sort of uh, the, the path, the, 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 the decided path towards mm. power and glory and whatnot. So <laughs> when you say uh, your mother is, right. is responsible for this, what do you mean by that? What do you think? Well, like I was born and raised in an environment where well, she literally owned a bookshop and I was surrounded by it and I loved it. And mm. she was, I my first guitar that I ever picked up was my mom's and you know, all the rest of it. So it's only natural that I sort of lean towards this type of uh, of the jobs that I am that I have. Mm. But to be fair, my mom never told me to do this. She, she was actually against me <laughs> acquiring a dying bookshop or mm. becoming a musician for a job. So... Mm. Yeah, well, hopefully when she, if, she's, if she's hearing this, uh, she'll forgive me for blaming her. Well, it seems like you've become some sort of, uh, shall we say, like a renaissance man, doing all these different things, having all this different expertise and right. uh, and uh, experiences. Right. Uh, what, looking ahead, what do you want to keep doing? I feel like this is, for you, this is almost like a start of a journey. Right, well, I had no idea when I was, well, I started my my restaurant and my and my publishing house when I was in the army, while well, I was sort of envisioning it when I was in the army. Right. And I had no idea that I would be doing this two years ago or even right. a so year ago. When were you in the army? So you were in the I military. got out last year. You got out last year, right? Yeah. Okay, All okay. this happened in a, in a, in a year. So like, Crazy. none of this was planned or imagined mm. and I have no clue what I'm going to be doing in five years or 10 years for that matter. Mm. So uh, I just keep it open, but whatever I'm doing is probably going to be along that sort of general spectrum of trying to continue a historical uh, sort of legacy that I that I am am, am uh, thrown with in this mm. peninsula, mm. Uh, and I'll try to be as free as possible uh, to live a free life is <laughs> is what I want to do. Well, let's get a bit more specific. I, for example, the bookstore. Right. What's next for the bookstore? Well, we're gonna. Well, we're gonna save it, which means it's, I, I want. It's, you're still in the process of saving it. Well, it's it's still dead. Right. I'm taking it out of the coffin right now, but it's still pretty dead. Mm. So I, I gotta save it, which means I'm gonna have. I want to see young people, well, old people alike. I want to see more people coming into my bookshop, buying books, and mm. participating in the events that I host. Mm. And uh, for for that bookshop, the next step I am sort of discussing right now, we're trying to host a reading party. Mm. A reading party is a concept that I that I found at my graduate school at Oxford, and where they they go to Alps for the summer. They spend a month or several weeks in the in the cabin in the Alps, not doing anything but read and drink wine. Right, right. And it's like the best kind of retreat you can ever imagine. So I'm trying to bring that into Korea. I'm, I'm thinking of Kangwondo or Chalado. I've been meeting with people who has like you know, mountains that I can borrow. Right. It's a little, so, bit, little, little bit like Dead Poet Society. Or exactly. Like right, so right. It's something, it's very romantic and people are going to pay a lot of money for it, I'm thinking. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully, so, hopefully. So that's my next plan for the bookshop. Yeah. Right. And briefly for your band as well, Young Bandle. From band, well, our album just got out hmm. well, uh, and uh, we're going to have a gig this Sunday, this very Sunday in, in Hongdae, in Sengi Studio. And we're going to have a lot more interesting gigs coming up. Our new single is going to come out next year too. So uh, that's that's really my main thing. Mm. So the when musically we're trying to I'm trying to bring it not just into the, the Korean market but also to the wider world. Well, it's been fascinating to hear your story today. I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if I keep coming across your name in news articles and stories going forward. And we can't see what we can't wait to see what you do next. We've been speaking to musician humanitarian and modern day renaissance man Tan Bam Tan for a touch base insult today. Thank you for sharing your story with us and we hope you uh, come back on the show sometime soon. Sure, thank you. <laughs>